the film was uh, very interesting and I, I really love the the core conceit of the film with you know the lack of sleep and how it's getting people to react is a very novel idea and it's something I haven't really seen explored before. Uh, how'd you come across that concept? Um, so the concept was interesting. It was like, we were basically had this like log line of uh, a solar flare happens and what if like no one can fall asleep? You know, can you do anything with it? Um, we're giving it to, to our producers, by our producers. And me and my brother kind of, we came up with this story of you know, there's lots of directions to go with it, but like what cracked the story open for us was this idea that not, it's not everyone who can't sleep. You know, there has to be one person who can sleep to kind of um, balance the film or ground the film in something, something unique, uh, something real, sorry. And that's kind of where we came up with the father-daughter story, uh, fa mother-daughter family story. Yeah, and I, I really like that you didn't, spent a whole lot of time like focusing on what caused it, you know, the, the inner working. It was more just the human side of how people are impacted by it. What made you uh, go in that decision? Um, I think like the, the concept that, or kind of what I wanted to explore and something I kind of like to explore in all my films is like characters and choices. So something that was very important to me was that like, there's no like evil characters. There's no good and bad in this film, although we can, perceive them as good as bad it's just like when you're presented with something so stressful uh, and, and that that's such a burden on society how are different people going to react and how is that kind of like true to them um how do they like they have to believe they're doing the right thing even though for some it might seem crazy and for others it might seem normal so that was basically the concept and we quickly realized that like why it happened doesn't matter it's really it's like how people how people react to it that matters and um which I guess we're getting a little glimpse, like this was all written and directed pre-pandemic. We're getting a little glimpse of that now with the current circumstances of like how pe different people are reacting to it in different ways. Yeah, it's a very interesting human drama. And I wanted to get some thoughts onto how you went to depict uh, insomnia in the film. You know, you, you bring up like sleep deprivation, uh, that type of torture in the film. Did you uh, explore that? Did you get uh, talk to experts on how to properly, you know, showcase those effects? Yeah, so we did like a ton of research on it, talked to different doctors, a lot of books, a lot of books on how it's used as torture, articles on how it's used as torture methods. Um, so, you know, it was important for us to, we got a good grasp on it and, and it was a little bit tricky because you know you, you make movies shooting out of order and trying to track it throughout the film and trying to make sure people are at the right stages at the right time. But we did the, a ton of research and the, the, bit, the biggest difference, I guess, between like reality and the film is that in reality, people take, have these things called micro sleeps where it's like the, the, the brain just can't, the body just won't, can't function. So it'll just like force your body to go to sleep. And sometimes it's only like 30 seconds, a minute, even if you have insomnia and you think you're awake, so in our movie, those do not exist. And so it's even like amplified two to three times you say in the movie because there's no rest ever for the brain. Um, so that was like the one leap. We don't know if that's factual because it's not proven, but that's one leap of science that we made. So Gina Rodriguez is so great as the mother. And uh, can you just talk about how she embodied that character and she really brought it to life? She's so great as a protective person. You know, she's trying to get her life back on track when this happens and she's willing to just sacrifice so much of herself to protect her kids it's a it's a great story yeah i mean this was this was the you know the genesis of the story is like this mother who despite best efforts again this kind of like not wanting black or white but despite her best efforts all she wants to do is provide for her kids and she's been damaged and she's not quite good at it and her history and her background um really gives her the opportunity to step forward and, and and as you watch the movie you can also see like you can question some of the decisions she's making um but what we know what's at the core of it is that this love and desire to protect her family even if the way she's going about it might not be the way other people would go about it um and gina herself is great you know she's uh it's funny because like the first thing i was worried about when i when i talked to her about it was you know i think she was 35 and i'm like you know, you're gonna you're 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 playing a mother of of like a, a 18 year old and 13 year old girl here. You know, are you okay with this? And she's like, oh yeah, I don't care. You know, this is and it's in the script. You know, she's supposed to be a young mother, 
but just her willingness to embrace that, you know, she's, I know she says like a lot, you know, a lot of people don't want to be typecast as a mother when they're so young and mother teenagers, but Gina was just so on board with this and was like really embracing it. Just thought it was an important story to tell. I also love the performance of Shamir Anderson as Dodge. And as you're saying, the, the shades of gray here, you know, here's a convicted, you know, felon and he's one of the biggest heroes in the film. And he, you know, he's supportive and, uh, you know, just kind of flipping that on your heads. Like you see somebody in a prison uniform, you know, and he, he stole their car at first and you're like, oh, this guy's going to be bad news. But, you know, everybody's trying to survive. Can you talk a bit about his performance and what he brought to the character? Yeah, Shamir is great. He's really, really good. And like one of the things, you know, for all the characters, we we delve into this like deep background of how they got where they were when we meet the thing. And, you know, so so Shamir and I, we had this understanding of who he was before we meet him in the film. And and part of the reason is, you know, there, there's, there is mass, in, mass uh, unequal incarceration. So our idea was always like, you know, and I don't want to give away the film too much, but Shamir's a guy who's like, you meet him as a prisoner, but he's a guy who should have never been in prison to, to begin with. Um, and that's why, you know, he turns out to be this, this kind of good, good guy. So we just wanted to touch on that subject a little bit in the film. And, you know, his performance is great because he, um, he brings something different and he, he brings, I wouldn't call it humor, but there's like a, 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 a likeness at times where we, you know, he brings a, a different a different thing from a mother trying to protect their kids at all costs. He has something else going on. And I think it counterbalances Gina and what she's doing particularly well. And then the young actress you have playing as Matilda, she's fantastic. Uh, can you talk about the challenges of working with a, you know, a younger actor? And she plays the part so well, you know, so it definitely works. And, you know, a lot of, in a lot of ways, she's the heart of the film. Yeah, it's interesting. She's she's great. She's fantastic. She's been in uh, Ariana Greenblatt. She's she's done a ton of stuff since we shot Awake, and she's currently doing a lot of stuff. Um, I think she will be a name that a lot of people will recognize in years to come. Um, it was challenging for me. I've never worked with kids before. It constricts your day. They would have to be in school during the day. They can only work a certain amount of hours. So um, from a technical standpoint, it was very difficult. But in terms of working with her, it was, I couldn't have asked for a better, um, a better partner in this. She was just so professional, so prepared, really willing to do whatever it took. And you can see like, you know, she was kind of born to do this. So very excited for her performance. And one of the, one of the interesting things in the film is, um, you know, it's different than other films in, in the sense that, uh, and again, not to give too much of it away, but, you know, clearly Gina Rodriguez, her character Jill is our protagonist throughout the film, but there is this kind of crossing that, you know, films don't really, really, it hasn't really been done too much in film where I think feel by the end of the film, she's our protagonist. Matilda, the young girl is our protagonist. So there is this kind of handoff, um, which was incredibly challenging because it's just not conventional, but, uh, but Ariana was able to handle it so well. And then my, my last question, you know, I just want to talk a bit about the, the film's depiction of humanity. And I really liked how it's a very dark film and we're seeing people break under the pressure. Uh, but we're also seeing, you know, in Gina's character, just the lengths, you know, we're willing to go for family. It's very two different sides. And uh, was it difficult to keep that sort of hope alive in the film with, you know, showing so much uh, mayhem and uh, sad moments throughout? Yeah. So what what was very important to me coming into this film it was that and it's weird because as i mentioned we shot this kind of pre-pandemic so um it might even feel darker now but was that this world this like quest to survive because you know it's it's claim it's pretty early we set up that if we don't solve this everyone's going to die it has to be meaning it has to be meaningful not so much meaningful there has to be a desire so we have to depict the world as a hopeful place we have to want to survive in it, right? Like it's, it's, and we did that a little bit visually. We tried to do like a color pal palette that was very hopeful with bright saturated colors instead of our typical like dystopian doom and gloom. Why would I even want to, why am I fighting to survive in this world that's chaos? We want to say, no, the world has potential to be a beautiful place. Let's fight for it. Let's want to survive in it. So visually, aesthetically, um, we tried to convey that message. And then also in terms of their relationship I think, and the love 
for each other, we tried to kind of convey that it's, you know, it's worth fighting for.